In most recent versions of Windows, for example 11, there's a keyboard shortcut that almost no one has ever heard of and with even less people using it regularly. If you're on Windows right now, you can even try it out. Try pressing Shift, Control, the Windows key Alt and L and you'll be greeted by the LinkedIn in your browser. But why is that? Who's this for and why does the shortcut require so many modifier keys to be pressed? So it all starts here, at the developers of Windows, Microsoft of course. As some of you might know, they have been making hardware to go along with their OS, for example computer mice, laptops, but especially keyboards. And in October 2019, they wanted to try something new. They added two special Windows related keys on their keyboards, replacing the right Windows key and the almost never used menu key. To be honest, I don't even know what it does. Apparently it just opens the context menu if your mouse doesn't have a right click button. Microsoft looked at this and thought, well, that's not useful, what else can we put there? And they came up with this, one key for emojis and another key for Microsoft Office. That's right, they decided that it was sensible to add a whole different key for one of the other products. This was obviously targeted at businesses, but it never really caught on. As far as I'm aware, the only products where these keys were ever present were their own overpressed keyboards and no third party ever adopted them. Looking at images of Surface laptops of that time, they don't even seem to have the key. They never really loudly presented this change and kind of just quietly released it in their new keyboard lineup. The worst part is, if you look at Microsoft's most recent laptops and keyboards and look for the special keys, what are you gonna find? That's right, they've reverted back to the menu key. There really isn't that much info about this online too, but it seems as if the keys have not even lasted 5 years before Microsoft quietly discontinued them again. They also completely rebranded Microsoft Office to Microsoft 365, which is not only a worse name, but also made the logo printed on the Office key obsolete. So what does this key even do exactly and what does it have to do with the weird LinkedIn shortcut? First of all, the emoji key does just what you might expect. It opens the emoji picker, so you can select one of the emojis to paste somewhere. The office key is a little different though. You might expect it to do something in the Microsoft Office applications, but no, it's only able to launch them. If you press the key once, you would be brought to an office launching center where you could, well, launch those apps. Alternatively, you could hold down the button like a modifier key and press a letter to open an according program. You see where I'm going with this? The office key was never a modifier key of its own. It functions the same way as the hyper key does. Wait, what's the hyper key? Well, a long time ago keyboards looked more like this. This is the so-called Space Cadet keyboard. It's got a lot of interesting buttons uh, that you don't really find on modern keyboards such as rub out Greek, hands that point in different directions and a very weirdly shaped shift button. I have no idea what most of these do, but most importantly we got hyper, super, meta and control. While control, meta and the super key in the form of the windows key still exist on modern windows, the hyper key has to be emulated by pressing shift, control, windows and alt. So that's exactly what the office key does. It presses those four modifier keys. They apparently did this to preserve backwards compatibility and because they thought no one uses Hyper anymore and no developer would use the terrible ergonomics of those shortcuts. They were only partially right. Some users remap, for example the caps lock key to Hyper to have some more shortcuts. So starting from Windows 10 version 1903, the shortcuts were mapped to open certain programs or if you don't have them installed, the landing page for them. W for Word, X for Excel, P for PowerPoint, O for Outlook, D for OneDrive, N for OneNote, T for Teams, Y for Yammer, whatever that was, and of course L for LinkedIn. As you can see, they really tried to put all the crappy business programs in there. And do you remember how some people used Hyper to have more shortcuts? Well, they got these new shortcuts shoved in their face with no way of turning them off easily. It really is beyond me why they handled this the way they did. The Office key might not have had that much potential, but somehow they still underdelivered. And now, at the end of the day, it's just remnants of a once ambitious idea that still exists in Windows to this day, even though Microsoft has already abandoned the idea of it. Or have they? Microsoft unveils Copilot Key, its biggest update to Windows Microsoft Keyboard announces AI key on Windows. Microsoft, Microsoft adds AI key to the first Copilot key. Microsoft adds AI key to Windows 11 PCs. Microsoft adds AI key to the first Copilot key. Microsoft adds AI key to the first Copilot key. Come on, of course it's gotta be AI crap. Oh, thanks for watching. If you like this kind of content, uh, this is my first time. Yeah, crazy shit. Goodbye.